You know what they say about keyboards, it's not about size, it's about how you use it. Or is it? The age-old question about keyboards. So, for starters, I was always opposed to the idea of smaller size keyboards, even if I don't use all the keys, maybe some will come in handy eventually, but I was always very annoyed with desk space, and the way my current setup is, I found the size of my keyboard puts stress on my mouse hand, having to stretch that arm more to the right than usual, and being on the computer for some 18 hours a day, work and play alike, I just could not ignore the first world problem anymore, so I bit the bullet and got myself a Vortex Cypher VTG-6900, a 65% keyboard. But what does that even mean? And uh, this isn't really a keyboard review by the way, just uh, my ramble about a personal experience to do with keyboard size. Well, a full-size keyboard is 100%, uh, and any size below that will be smaller than it. The two most common variants are TKL, or a 10 keyless keyboard, which for all intents and purposes is a full-size keyboard with the numpad shaved off. Another one is a 60% keyboard, which usually lacks the directional keys and the function keys. The Happy Hacker keyboard is a popular keyboard in the 60% form factor. But if those keys are not on the keyboard, how do you access them? Well, usually via some key combination, so really you may be adding an extra key press in exchange for free space. But that's simplifying ergonomics a little too much for my taste. Sometimes having to press a key combination to input a key is actually faster, because both of those keys are easier to reach than the one key. And other times, small changes to the layout just make sense. After all, QWERTY wasn't designed to be the most efficient layout. It was designed to prevent typewriters from jamming. But that's what I'll be sticking to for this video, especially the ISO UK layout, because the US layout is an abomination and can burn in hell. I'm sure I'll get comments about that statement. A 65% keyboard is basically usually like a 60% keyboard, except, uh, like in my case here, it also has the home, page up, page down, and, and the cursor keys. Uh, I'm not too big on the home, page up, page down, and, and although they come in useful sometimes. Uh, but I could deal with those being combination key presses. It's the cursor keys that I really, really value. I honestly have no idea how you get around not having cursor keys on uh, like the Happy Hacker keyboard, uh, unless you just always use the key combination for something as simple as cursor, or maybe you don't even use anything that requires cursors, maybe you mostly just use mouse and type, and you don't navigate with cursor keys very much, but frankly, uh, I just can't imagine it. I mean, sometimes I'm in the bash shell in Linux and I need to go up to the last or some command that I typed in today, and I would just keep pressing up, but yeah, well, each to their own, I suppose, but uh, that's why I chose a 65% keyboard, and I've been using this keyboard for over a month, and I'm still pretty impressed with how small it is, uh, compared to say this classic IBM style keyboard I reviewed in another video. Click on the top right to see that. Uh, didn't get that many views, maybe some of you might like it, although the video isn't exactly my best work. Even smaller, but still full size, my Ducky One Rainbow Edition, uh, for a long time I thought of it as this monument that sits on my desk, but this 65% keyboard, it kinda changed my perspective on it. It's portable, not that I take it anywhere, especially not with some current world events, but it's that I can move it around, and if I'm leaning in my chair a bit more to one side or another, sloping off during the late hours of the night, it's just so portable and nice. And look at my mouse, it dwarfs the keyboard compared to what I'm used to. It's really not such a big deal, I suppose, but something about this just keeps blowing my mind over and over again. Something hardwired in my brain is saying, this doesn't look right, it's so tiny. Why is it so tiny? It's so damn cute. Yeah. But, rants aside, what does this look like from my, you know, typing perspective? I mean, bashing heads with keyboards is great, especially if it's heavy. But really, typing, I think, is what we use our keyboards the most for. Well, typing tests are hardly indicative of real-world typing speed, in my opinion, but 
this should give you a little bit of an idea, a rough estimate, at least how good I am with the two different types of keyboard layouts. I did these back to back on both keyboards. That's my Cherry MX Blue Equipped Ducky One Rainbow Edition and my Cherry MX Clear Equipped Vortex Cipher. Uh, sitting at the same desk on the same computer. Both the switches are mechanical, both are Cherry MX switches. And well, surprising as it may be, I'm faster on the small one, if by a small margin. Of course, that maybe that's more to do with switches. A more scientific comparison would be to compare apples to apples and have a larger sample size of typists, more than one. But uh, to attempt to account for that bias, I'll say that as for switches, for typing, I probably prefer the Cherry MX Clears, uh, same as my Buckling Spring switches on my IBM Classic style board. I just like the fact that I don't end up bottoming them out like Cherry MX Blues which are better for gaming because uh, the nice tactile hard feedback they give on each key press. If you need to press keys in a very exact time, then, you know, Cherry Max Blues are the way to go, I think. But clears just make my hands less fatigued over a long uh, period of typing. There's a sort of valley of force to actuation that cushions the finger and pushes it back before it bottoms out the key and kind of gives you this unpleasant feeling in your finger. But on the other hand, the things that actually literally cushion your fingers are keycaps. And I'd say my ducky one has better keycaps than this Vortex. As you can see, I've replaced the space bar in this one because I thought it looks cool. But I think the stock keycaps on here are serviceable. The material's fine. I'm fine with that. But, uh, you know, they're not exactly high-end. And neither is this entire keyboard, really. I got it for a rather good price. They're certainly worth of a standard mechanical keyboard, but looking at them, especially the font, I kind of prefer the ducky in this aspect. Does it affect performance? And no, I don't think a uh, keycap font is that uh, significant when it comes to your actual typing speed and comfort. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. What does affect the performance? The missing keys, right? What of the missing keys? Well, on every keyboard, it's different, but on my Cypher Vortex, it works like this. Fn and number keys are the function keys. So to press F1, you'd press Fn and the number key 1. And most keys work similarly. For example, Fn and the at symbol key are delete, which is one that I haven't learned still and have to usually pause before doing the key combination, which is frustrating, but not nearly as much as you'd expect it to be. There are also layers you can program to be able to quickly switch between keys. Although the software isn't perfect, I find that a lot of peripheral software is just complete garbage to be honest, so this is no surprise to me. I built my PC a few years back at this point and I would never found RGB controller software that works perfectly all the time. It almost seems like those display rigs they have at conventions and whatnot are just hardwired to function properly. And when YouTubers show them off, it's probably a few seconds of footage before the software inevitably craps out. In my experience, it just takes a lot more luck than it should to have the functioning software that I need to be able to set up those RGB things exactly how I want them. It, that is if it even works at all, G skill. But it's not that bad, I was able to quickly solve my issue by looking it up and really I only use the software to test out the functionality, frankly I don't see much need for the layer system at all. And if you do want to program, you can still have macros on your keyboard, uh, activating by some key combination. The actual programming you can do on the keyboard itself using the special PN key. Really though, I just don't bother so far, it's fine the way it is. Some keys are a bit of a pain to press. Just to take a screenshot on Windows, you have to press the Windows key and the print screen. But since there's no print screen key here, it means you have to press the Windows key, the function key, and P, making it a three finger salute like the good old control alt delete. Which is now a four finger salute of control, alt, at, and function. Except it doesn't work, because Windows doesn't like it, I imagine. 
The keyboard does support up to six keys being pressed at the same time, so must be that, or I don't know. You can fix this with layers, uh, you can set another layer to have a dedicated delete key, which is probably what I'm gonna do, but I haven't had much uh, need for it yet. But I just hope I don't ever have to input or Q key combinations on a Linux machine using this keyboard because unless you program it in software, there's no built-in way to press the Q keys. Yikes. Why not like FN plus S or PN plus S? It's strange to me that my good old ThinkPad X201 has such a tiny yet ergonomic keyboard and still manages to fit in like every key in exactly the space it's supposed to be. Hell, it even fits in two keys that shouldn't exist. If someone could replicate that exact layout, but with mechanical switches, that'd be sweet. Maybe a future project? Who knows? But aside from the above flaws and inconveniences, what I've gained far outweighs what I might have lost, as really, I'm not going to press this RQ keys on the daily, but I'm going to be moving around in my chair and occupying my desk with clutter, like the filthy consumer I am. So yeah, this is pretty good, uh, but it's up to you to decide what's best for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I realized this is a quick one and I haven't been uploading much lately. I'll try to post more videos. Uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully, it's sometime in the next 20 years. Yeah, well... Well, anyways. Is a 65% keyboard really all you need? Do you need more? Or is it a matter of just wanting more? Is it more comfortable? Less comfortable? Well, I talked about what I thought in the video and you can tell me what you thought down in the comments below. And you know, if you liked this video, if you thought it was interesting, then give it a like and maybe subscribe for more tech, retro tech, gaming, entertainment, content, really whatever I feel like, honestly, and your suggestions, which uh, are coming. I appreciate that videos have been coming out pretty slowly lately. Uh, trust me, I know. I haven't abandoned the channel or anything like that. In fact, you guys have been pros with your comments and everything. You're really champions, you know that? So anyway, um, champions that's so weird champs i don't know Not, yeah okay whatever um <laughs> anyway so I, I want you to know that i'm currently just busy with stuff i'm doing a master's degree which is no joke trust me if you're someone considering to do a master's degree after your bachelor's degree then yeah you know just be aware the workload's pretty intense every coursework is like all the courseworks so yeah well regardless um i hope you've had fun watching this and there will be more videos coming as soon as i get to them as soon as i get to them but stay tuned you don't want to miss out right you're afraid of missing out you're always afraid of missing out i know i'm afraid of missing out i missed a bus earlier what am i talking about right merry christmas